If you're online, kindly join the live section. Good evening, sir. Niyi. Good evening, sir. Tola. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Please, if you're online, kindly join the live section. All right, so I'll be saying a short word of prayer before I, you know, give the podium to Daddy Tola. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we thank you for today. Thank you for the many things that you have been doing upon our lives and our family. We ask for mercy in any way we have sinned against you, Lord. Have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, even as we'll be commencing this program now, we pray that let your light shine. Everything that we'll be communicating shall bear truth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to the name of the Lord. Jesus' name we pray. All right, without wasting so much of our time, I've dropped the portfolio of our guest for tonight. You could see it on the chat button. So with Jesus' joy and with a warmth of appreciation, let's welcome Tola Alabi, Daddy Tola Alabi to the podium. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, you can start now. Okay, Shola, how are you doing? Um, how's everyone doing? It's great to be here tonight. Um, hope you all can hear me clearly. Um, thanks for taking the time to invite me to um, to this platform. Um, I'm really glad to be here. I think this is going to be the first, if I'm not wrong, this is going to be the first um, session. No, this is the second. The group. No, 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 no. I, I, I know it's the second time I'm meeting with your group, but the, for this year, this is the first time I'm having any kind of um yes, sir. Yes, sir. session with any with any group whether with your group or any group whatsoever i don't think i've had any speaking wow. engagement with any group on so this so, so this is going to be the first one and it's 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 an honor for it to be on your platform so thanks for always wow. inviting me and um i'm glad to yes, talk sir. on this subject matter um although i'm, I'm not really a big fan of talking at this time <laughs> at 9 p.m because uh, I, I, I like to turn in early, but um, I'll take some time and I'll just see if we can talk about this thing. Not take too much time, uh, but see what, what we can do in a matter of minutes. Um, so I, I want to quickly talk about this subject matter of what to do in challenging times. And um, I think that's a very, it's a very good um topic that you have um given to me to talk about um i took some time to listen to your session from yesterday and, and i think you said some very important things and i think people need sessions like this for this kind of period when um things are particularly hard not just in nigeria but globally things are hard um, a lot of people are facing challenges um, in their work, facing challenges in relationships, facing challenges with family, facing challenges with academics, um, facing challenges with health. Um, it's a very challenge reading time that we, are, that we live in. And um, I want to try my best to see if I can talk about what to do in times of challenges, or in times where you face challenges. and. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to take my reference from the Bible, what to do when you face challenges. So I will, I will be talking about um, a character in the Bible called Ruth. Now, Ruth is a woman, and I feel her life as a person was a life that was initially filled with challenges. And... Um, I'm going to use her, her life as an example, as, as a template to serve as what we can do when we have challenges in our lives. And um, you see, I'm coming from a place, I'm a, and I'm still in a place whereby I have challenges in my life, facing a lot of challenges, some financial, some business-wise. And I've had the opportunity to read through the book of Ruth to encourage me that challenges are part of life. And that's the very first thing I want to say. 
is that we must accept that challenges are part of life. You cannot remove challenges from life and still have life. Um, so life is like a fruit. Challenges are like the seed in the fruit. Um, it's very, very hard to have a natural fruit without seeds in it. If you know, is, is this genet genetically modified fruits that they make right now, that they make seedless. But originally, fruits are meant to have seeds in them. And just like life is meant to have challenges. So we must never forget that. Um, okay, Shola, I, I, I think your mic is on. So, so it's kind of getting in my um, interference. Thanks, thanks. All right, sorry about that. Okay, no problem. All right, so I was just saying that challenges are part of life. That's the first th thing you must know when dealing with challenges. They are part of life. If you're having challenges in your life, it's not because your life is not going well. It's not because your life is strained. Every single person has challenges. Every single person. Every single person. Nobody is immune to challenges. Nobody is exempt from challenges. And that's the first thing I want you to know, is that we must learn to accept and acknowledge the fact that we are going through hard times. And sometimes it's very hard, especially for people of faith, and especially the Christian faith, we've come to a point whereby we deny challenges. So when you are sick, you are saying you are not sick. When you don't have money, you are saying you have money. When you're heartbroken, you're saying your heart is strong. You understand? So they come, there is this, you know, there's a thin line between what we call positive conversion, confession and what we, um, and denial and acknowledgement of what is actually happening. And sometimes we as Christians must be able to acknowledge that we are going through challenges. And that's why when you read the book of Ruth, they were under no illusion that they were going through challenges. Now, I'll give you a background to the book of Ruth and Ruth and Naomi, who are like the co who are like the um the main heroes in this book of Ruth. And it starts out by saying there was a huge famine in um there was a huge famine in in Bethlehem, in Judah then, and a man called Elimelech had to leave with his wife, Naomi, to, and their sons to a place called Moab. So the famine was so terrible. The famine was so bad that they had to relocate. You understand? There was nothing to eat, nothing to plant, nothing to do business with. So they had to relocate. So when they relocated with their two sons, the two sons met two ladies, Moab ladies, and they got married to them. And when they got married to them, um, soon after Elimelech died, the patriarch of the family, he died. And he was left with the wife and the two sons. And the two sons, some years after, now died. So he was left with the wife and the wives of the two sons. Um, so it was Naomi who was the matriarch of the family now and her daughter-in-laws that were left all the men in the family had died anybody that looks at that that's a challenge in itself that you lost three members of a family that are meant to be like the key providers in the family as, as their tradition would have it then was a, was a huge challenge for them it was a huge challenge they couldn't deny it. it was a huge blow it was huge sorrow it was very, very heartbreaking. And some of you are going through challenges today. You need to be able to admit it. You understand? Um, your acknowledgement of it is not a lack of faith. Your acknowledgement of it is you being true to what is going on and really being able to express yourself to God and tell yourself, tell God that this thing I'm going through is a challenge. It's painful. It's hard. It's tormenting. You understand? It's heartbreaking. You must be able to admit your challenges. The first step to overcoming challenges is to admit that you have challenges in the first place. So 
admitting your challenges is very, very important. Admitting the fact that you have challenges in your life is very important. And now, what's the second thing you do after you must have admitted your challenges? And this is where we look at the second thing that Ruth did. And that is not going, not following the crowd. Um, now, when there are challenges, there is a tendency to want to start an, afresh and just go to a place and start afresh. And that's what we see a lot in Nigeria today, where there are a lot of challenges. And you can see there's a Jagma mentality that has kind of pervaded young people in Nigeria. Now, I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying it's not good if it's out of herd mentality. That's what other people are doing. That's what I should do um, to, to, to run away from the challenges and to want, to want a fresh start. And this is where I'm going to talk about what happened between Ruth and Naomi. Now, when the men had died, Naomi went, was, said she would go back to her hometown because she heard that the famine had stopped there. And when she was about to go back, she told her daughter-in-laws, I'm setting you free. You can go and start your life afresh. You understand? Start your life afresh and forget the past. You know, start, start afresh. You know, go and get new husbands and start new family. Now, she had these two daughters, Ruth and Opa. And Opa decided to go. But Ruth decided to stay with Naomi. She stayed in that situation with that person that they suffered the hardship together. So she didn't do what her age mates did. And that's what we kind of do when we go through challenges. What we do is what our peers do. And that's such a, such a wrong thing to do when you're going through challenges. You, you shouldn't look to your peers when you're going through challenges. It's better to pitch your tent with older, wiser people than people that are your peers. Because people that are your peers can only see to the level to which you can see. So you are following people that can't see any better than you. That's, that's the worst thing, to follow your peers when you are going through challenges. So you are looking, so if I'm going through challenges now, it will be very wrong for me to look at what my age mates are doing. Because my age mates cannot see any further than I can see. So who do you look to? Who do you pitch your tent to with? You pitch your tent with older, more experienced people. Because you know what? The way the world is, what has happened, what's happening now has happened before. And that's why it's very important for you as young people to have older people in your circle or to be in the circle of older people. Young people that hang out with older people end up becoming wiser people. Young people that, end, that, that hang out with their peers most of the time end up become average people. Young people that hang out with younger people most of the time end up becoming foolish people. So you have to think of what you want to be. Do you want to be wise? Do you want to be average? Or do you want to be foolish? If you want to be wise, you must be hang out with those that are ahead of you, that have been through what you are going through and have come out of it. If you want to be average, hang out with those that are going through it at the same time. And if you want to be foolish, hang out with those that have not gone through what you are going through, that can't give you any advice or direction. And that's what um, Ruth did. She didn't follow her fellow sister-in-law and say, this is my age mate, this is what she's doing, I will follow her. No, no, no. She stuck with Naomi, an older lady, because she realized that there was a wisdom in Naomi. She realized that Naomi one time was her age and she knew how she would guide her through that difficult time. So the first thing, as I said, is acknowledgement. Second thing is don't follow the crowd. Follow an older person. Follow a mentor, a teacher, someone that has been there, someone that is older. 
Do you know older doesn't need to be drastically older? It can be a year older. It can be some, some months older. Age is something no one can buy. It's a resource you can't buy. Do you understand? And the truth is, even a month is a long time. Can give a world of difference in decision making. Follow someone who has been there. And sometimes eh, it might not even be older by age per se, but older by experience. So some people it might even be your age mate. But by virtue of how they've moved in life, they've moved further than you. They've done, you know, they've gone ahead of you to do some things. You want to be with them and have conversations with them. But those people are few and far between. What I would say is find older mentors, older ones. Always be in the room. Try to be in the room where sometimes you are the youngest person. Very important. There's a lot of value to be gotten in that environment. So when you look at the book of, of Ruth, it says that um, Naomi, Naomi told Ruth to leave. It said, but Ruth replied, that's Ruth 1, 16. It says, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you leave, I will leave. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. You see, she, she totally aligned with her. That means... She, uh, um, um, Naomi became Ruth's mentor. So the first thing when hardship came was she looked for a mentor. And when, if I ask you how many of you have mentors, a lot of you don't have mentors. You see, I see a lot of young people, what they do is they scorn older people. They look at them as old fashioned, boomer. Um, you know, they, they are not aligned with technology, they are not this, they are not cool, they are not that. They might not have all those things, but they are wise. They are wise. And that's why the Yoruba say, you might have more clothes than your elders, but you, you can never have more rags than them. And what rags means, rags symbolizes experience. It symbolizes mistakes that they've made that they can share with you that you don't have to make. So find mentors. It's so important that you are able to find mentors. Um, the, the second and the third thing, remember the first thing I said is acknowledgement of challenges. Second thing is find mentors. The third thing, if we continue looking at the book of Ruth, is you must find work. In challenging times, you must find work. Now your work will be categorized into two. One will be work as a service, selfless work. Do you understand? You must find selfless work, very important. Doing challenges, find selfless work. That means work that doesn't pay you, but helps other people. You must find selfless work. And then second category of work you must also find in challenging times is sustenance work. So selfless work and sustenance work. Now, when you look at the life of Ruth, she was doing two types of jobs. Look at chapter two. She was taking care of Naomi, who was her mentor. She was taking care of her. She was serving her. And that's why when you have a mentor, you don't just have a mentor to be asking them for advice, 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 direction. And which is what a lot of people do. A lot of people drain their mentors. But it should be an exchange type relationship. So as you train them, you feed them. As they feed you, you know, that kind of thing is a cycle, you understand? So it's, you, there's value you can give your mentor or your teacher. And that's what Ruth was um, doing. She was working and taking care. He says that she was taking care of her, of her, her mother-in-law, was also a mentor taking care of her selflessly so the first work is work out of selfless service you must and and i know it's hard when you are when you're going through challenging times your first instinct is to take care of yourself 
but you must try to kick against that instinct and do self pour yourself into selfless work take care of people for whom you are not getting paid to take care of them find selfless work to do it might be for your mentor it might be for other people it might be for less privileged people it might be for but look for somebody that needs something that you have if it's your energy use your energy if it's your whatever skill if it's your knowledge give them but selfless work find it second work you will do is work for sustenance and when i say work for sustenance in challenging times is the time to find is to do the work that your hand finds do the work that your hand finds and you know what that means a lot of people are looking for the work that their mind finds not the work that their hands find the difference is the work that your mind finds is a dream job that one that your mind finds is a dream job the work that your hands find is a real job now people stay waiting for dream jobs in challenging times so the times are very hard economy is hard things are expensive price of things are going up income is not going up what do you do some people just stay and just say ah man i wish i had clients in the U u.s i wish i wish i had international clients i can't tell you how many people contact me telling me when when hard times come they just start dreaming i wish i had clients in the u.s paying me in dollars this is the time i really need dollar clients that is the job your mind has found your mind your mind is traveling far and wide thinking of the perfect job and then they get depressed when they don't find that perfect job that job that their mind has found but it doesn't come to the physical so they're thinking i wish i could just get this client right now that will be paying me 500k per month 600k 1 million per month i wish i could find a brand that could just that could just sign me as their influencer all those things are jobs that your mind has found very far-fetched it's not bad though, to dream of but in challenging times you can't be doing those kind of jobs you find the job that your hand you do the job that your hand can find that you can place your hand on and that's what ruth did here Ruth found a job that her hand could be placed on. So she said in in in, in verse um, in chapter two, um, she said, one day Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi. So she told her mother-in-law, "Let me go out into the harvest fields to pick up stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it." Now. I'll give you some context to what she means here, because we don't do this kind of job anymore. I'll tell you what that job she says she wants to do is. Because she was, they were foreigners and they've left Judah for a long time. When they came back, see when you leave a place, then you forfeit all you have. If you had houses before, somebody else takes it over. If you had a farm, somebody else takes it over. So you don't have anything. So when they left for Moab with Elimelech, when they came back, Without Elimelech and their husbands, they had nothing. Nothing, nothing to their name. Everything had been taken over. So they had no land. And then land was your office. They didn't have multi-story buildings where you could work in an office. Land, planting was the main thing. Keeping of livestock and crops, that was the main thing. So they didn't have any. So she couldn't be wishing that, ah, I wish I just had a land right now. Someone just give me a piece of land. No, they didn't have land. And she couldn't even work as a harvester because before they got back that harvester job had been taken by other people so the only job left was people that were picking up stuff that had fallen on the ground so when people were harvesting corn it's the small seeds that were left that she would go and pick do you understand those small small things that were left on the ground that rodents would come and eat later on was the one way that she was going to go and pick now the, the every farm needed someone to do that because it kept the farm clean and it kept the farm free of pests you understand so they needed people to come and pick but it was the lowest of the lowest jobs but that is what she could do to sustain at that point in time it was an embarrassing job embarrassing job but she had to do it and you are going if you're going through a time right now 
when it's challenging, don't be picky. Don't be picky. As much as your mind tells you not to settle, know that it's important to find work that your hands can do, not work that your mind can dream. Very important. Don't stick with work that your mind can dream. Start with the work that your hands can find to do. And that's what she did. And you see, when we read through that chapter 2, it says she was extremely hardworking at that job. We will go on and read it, and you see someone gave testimonial of her that she did the job so well, she hardly ever took breaks. Hardly took breaks. She did it from morning till night, diligently. The works her hands can do. When things are challenging, sometimes you might need to do the work your hands can find to do, and do it well. Do it well. Do it well. Very important. While you also do the work of service by the side. Those two jobs must go hand in hand. And I'll tell you why the service job is important. Now, the third thing, I mean, this is the, the, the fourth thing, and I'll go over it again. First thing, acknowledgement. Um, you must acknowledge the fact that there are hard times. Um, second thing, don't go with the crowd. Do you understand? Find teacher, mentor, hook yourself to them. Very important. Um, the third thing is find work. Find work of servitude and find work for sustenance because challenging times you need to be sustained. So very important. So find work for sustenance. Now, the fourth thing here is as you find work for sustenance to do, do it, do it well. Do it with all your heart. I mean, I, 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 I pointed, I kind of highlighted that when I was talking initially that you must do it with all your heart. Do it well. You understand? Do it well. Because the reason you must do it well is that it's in doing it well that you will get noticed. No matter how small your work is, no matter how lowly it is, when you do it well, people will notice you. And so when you look at, when you read the book of um, Ruth, it says that the owner of the farm, Boaz, came and he said, he, he noticed that he said, who is that woman over there? You see, why did he notice her? Because she was busy working. She was taking breaks and taking breaks and taking breaks and, you know, she wouldn't be visible. Remember, this, 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 I'm, not, I'm talking about little expanse of land. I'm talking about vast expanse of land that had a lot of people on it. So for her to stand out, it was, the, it was the work she committed herself to doing that made her stand out. And because she did it well, she got good reports. So it says in chapter 2, Ruth chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Boaz asked the foreman, who is that young lady over there? Who does she belong to? He said, and the foreman said, she is the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grains behind the harvesters. She has been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. A few minutes of rest. You understand? But then she was hard at work. It's when you're hard at work, at whatever it is you're doing, that people notice you. Do you understand? And that is the beginning of the breaking of that challenging period when you can be noticed by people that that are that are influential to say this person is something different. Look, hard work always shines out. I'm telling you, um, you know the truth of the matter is that hard work that word has been bastardized, has been abused. We've been told how unimportant it is. And I'm not saying hard work is what gets you there. That's not that the truth is that hard work is not what gets you to a place of um of it's not hard work that gets you to the top. That's the truth. But hard work in a world where people are increasingly slothful, increasingly lazy, increasingly not putting in their back to their work. Hard work can make you stand out. Do you understand? For people to notice you and call you and show you some favor. 
And that brings me to the next thing after, you know, when you find the work, you do it well. The next thing that will happen is that you'll find people that would favor you. And what I'm going to say, the next thing, the next thing that happens after hard work is you must be cognizant of the small privileges. Small privileges, very important. A lot of us, we overlook the small privileges. Small privileges, so he gave me what I have, yeah, so what? Is it what I'm looking for? I'm like, say, I'm looking for 100,000, give me a bottle of water. Do you understand? But that's what happened with Ruth here. When Boaz noticed her, he called her and told her she can eat with them. Do you understand? Because on a good day, she was not meant to eat with them, just pick and go. Remember, it was too lowly a job. He made the work, he gave her some, some fringe privileges. You see, a lot of times we overlook the fringe privileges. We overlook them. You are doing work because you don't like it. Someone, you know, a customer comes and gives you 15 naira extra. And you don't appreciate it. There are 15 naira. What would I want to do? Can't you just, can't you give me 5k extra? 5k tip? You understand? Sometimes they don't even give you anything. All they say is, mm, well done, you've done a good job. Give, they give you a compliment. I'm like, no, I might go to eat compliment. I'm looking for something to, something for me to break out. You understand? Something for me to break out of this level that I am in. And you, you under, undermine, undervalue, underrate the small favors in court. The small favors. But Ruth didn't undervalue them. You see, once Boaz gave her um, those favors and told her, look, let her gather grain. You see, it, it, it didn't promote her. It didn't make her a harvester. It just gave her, it just gave her some privilege. It said, drop some things for her to pick up. Drop, drop more, drop more grains for her to pick up. So it didn't change the job description. He just made it a little better, but she appreciated it. Some of you, eh, some people are making your life a little better, but you don't appreciate it because you are still thinking of that job that your mind has found. You're, so you are not you are not paying any attention to how the work your hand has found is finding you some favor, and it's in those small favors that. You get elevated to that work your mind is thinking of. So never forget small. Small favors, never forget. Small favors, while you're doing the job you don't really like, don't forget the small favors. Don't forget the small compliments. Don't forget the small thank yous. Don't forget the small bottles of water. Don't forget the small change that they give you. Don't forget those things. They're important, very important, while you do the things that your hand finds. I know it's challenging. 15 naira will not buy anything. But then those are small sparks telling you you're on the right path. Telling you God is seeing you. Don't forget it. And you see what Ruth did here afterwards was important. And now what you need to learn to do. Learn to celebrate those small wins. So how did she celebrate it? She went back home and she gathered some and she took it back home to Naomi, her mother-in-law, her mentor, her guide. And she said, look at what happened though. See, see the favor I've been given. Meaning that she had a very grateful heart. She had a grateful heart. Remember, she was still picking leftovers. Because the things they were dropping for her were not the best of the thing, but she still gathered and she took it home. Very important. Do you understand? Since those leftovers were good for her, the job was good. Do you understand? She saw the small favors. Boaz asking her to let her gather the sheaves without stopping her. He said, if you look at um, verse, verse 15, it says, when Ruth went back to work again, Boaz ordered his young men, let her gather grain right among the sheaves without stopping her. Pull out some herds of barley from the bundle and drop them on purpose for her to pick up and don't give her a hard time. She was still, she was still picking among the sheaves. It wasn't plenty, but then she appreciated it. She appreciated it. 
and she went back and she showed it to her guide. You see, when small things happen, those small things that people say, why are you, is that a big deal? Appreciate it and share it with your teacher, share it with your mentor. I'm not saying share, I don't mean share it with her, them per se, I'm just saying share the experience. You see, I have a mentoring club. And I appreciate when my mentees come to me to share little, in quote, little experiences, little wins. Very important. Share it. Share it with those people close to you. Share those little wins. And that's how you celebrate them. You understand? Celebrate them. Something good happened at work today. Yes, other people might not celebrate them, but you celebrate them. Remember, times are challenging. So when things are challenging and you're getting small favors, you must be able to celebrate them. Celebrate them with people. Talk about them. Talk about them, especially with those people that you see as your guides and um, your mentors. Now, the 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 next thing that happened, even after she had come to this place of she had acknowledged her hardship, um, she had aligned with a mentor, she had found work, she was serving. Um, she um, she was she was working hard at it. She had been noticed. She had been given small favors, which were um, which were bringing her um, um, which which she appreciated the small favors she was given. You see, those things were good. But even after that, eh, you see that Naomi gave her advice. She gave her advice. That's why those small things, why you should share them with your teachers, because your mentors, eh, they see seeds. Mentors are people that see seeds. And in the, that seed, they can see the tree. You understand? So your mentors are people that, when you show them seeds, they see the tree. And that's why it's always good when you have a mentor to share small things with them, because they, they are able to see the tree from the seed very important you just see a seed but they're able to see what that seed means and what it will grow into and that's what naomi was able to see when um ruth started telling about those small experiences see if if ruth had kept it in her heart and just said well we just told them to give me some to allow me pick some and stuff why should i go and be disturbing my my mother-in-law about those kind of things those things are not important you understand? We are looking for land. He didn't give me land. We are looking for inheritance. He didn't give me inheritance. I'm looking for husband. He didn't give me husband. You see, if she kept those small things to herself, she never would have gotten the advice that Ruth, that um, Naomi ended up giving her. You understand? So sometimes it's in sharing those small things that your mentor, your role model, and people like that would be able to see what you should do with those small favors. They are the ones that will tell you what to do with that 100 naira. They are the ones that will tell you how to build a relationship with that person that gave you a bottle of water. They will tell you what that bottle of water signifies. You understand? They will tell you what that compliment that person paid you, what it really means. You understand? So it's in, it's in, it's in being able to share it with them. And so she was able to share her experience and, and um, Naomi was able to tell Ruth what next to do. And what next to do was what totally took her out of a terribly challenging time in her life. Because Ruth told her, this favor that this man is showing you tells, gave her a, an inkling that he's interested in her. Do you understand? And says, you must present yourself well. And this brings me to the point of presentation. You see, never look like what you are going through. I'll tell you that. Never look like what you are going through. Try your best never to look like what you are going through. It's very important. Never look like your problem. Never look like your problem. If that's one thing one person will get from this um, session, please let it stick in your mind. Never look like your problem, no matter how bad it is. Never let people see your problem from when they are looking at you. And you can see here that um, if you look at chapter 3, um, verse, from verse 3, it says, Now do this, I tell you, 
Now this is um, Naomi talking to Ruth. It says, take a bath and put on perfume and dress in your nicest clothes and go to the threshing floor. So she told her to dress well and go to work. While they are doing that work that your hand finds, that is not the best job that your mind is thinking of, go as your best. Go as your best. Iron your shirt. Wash your blouse. Shine your shoes. Cut your hair. Make your hair. You understand? Wear your lipstick. Look good. Let them not know your problems by looking at you. Very important. Let people not know what's in your bank account because they have seen it on you. Look good. Even if it's one shirt you have, wash the shirt. Iron it. Because you know what? <clears throat> Favor comes with attraction. And so you must make yourself attractive. Make yourself attractive. Some people just look at it and say, I want to know this guy. I want to know this girl. You understand? Don't be repulsive. Don't be repulsive. And I'm not just talking about attractiveness in your adornment. I'm talking also with your expression. Yes, you are going through a hard time. doesn't mean you should frown your face every single time. You are never smiling because you are going through a challenging time. Wear a smile. Wear a smile. Don't let... Don't let people see your challenges on you. And you see, that's what um, um, Ruth was able to tell. Um, Naomi was able to tell Ruth. So that go and take, take your bath. Wear perfume. Wear your nicest clothes. But still go to that threshing floor where you are doing what seems to be the dirtiest work. But go there looking like the freshest person. That's where you meet favor. Look, one thing I try to do with myself is nobody would ever know when my account is low and when my account is high by looking at me. Never. Never. If I'm going out, I try to look my best, no matter how. No matter how. You never know that I'm going through challenges if I don't tell you. You will not know. Because I want my attraction to be constant. And that's the thing some of you must learn. Let your attraction be constant. Don't let don't don't don't, don't let um, transient challenges cause a permanent stain on people's perception of you. Do you understand? Let don't let anything muddle with your attraction, whether your attraction by demeanor or your attraction by dressing. You understand, and and it's not in the volume because I've seen people with with with, with a very very loaded wardrobe. You understand, a lot of shoes, but but in the end, still are not attractive because they don't take care of themselves. They don't groom themselves well, and I've seen people with very few things, but they groom themselves well. Very important. I remember I was telling my wife some um some time ago there was a guy that comes to our church, and you know he just he's in the media, and I told my wife. I want to know this guy, this particular guy. I just want to know him. There were two things about him that attracted me. The way he dressed, I realized that he was always wearing a particular attire. He never changed. So Sunday after Sunday was one he used to wear, but he always looked neat and clean. Number two, his attitude to his work. He was always doing his work diligently, not distracted and stuff. And I just told my wife, I want to get to know that guy's name. You see, the guy didn't know I'd been watching him. He didn't know. But there was an attraction I had to him. I just said, I want to know more about this young guy. Look, that guy, obviously, is struggling financially. But then you wouldn't see it. When I say, when I say obviously, you can, you, you can tell because he's not changing his clothes, not changing his shoes. But then he doesn't, he, it, 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 it's not something, he doesn't reek of it. You understand? I met him for the first time. He looks like a decent young man. You understand? If not that you take note of what he's wearing, that he's always repeating, he's a decent young man. You understand? And that's how you should be. 
and you can see with Ruth here, that was what that was what totally cemented her relationship with Boaz, that now put her in a place of honor. Do you understand? It was the it was the fact that she still looked dignified. She still walked in a dignifying way. She still gave herself selflessly. And this way I'm going to go back to that self, um, selfless service. Why you do it is because in challenging times, selfless service shines. In challenging times, selfless service shines. Hustle doesn't shine in, in challenging times because everybody hustles. At least most people hustles, hustle in challenging times. So that doesn't shine. But when you work for others without looking out for yourself, in a time where everybody is looking out for yourself, for themselves, you will stand out. And then people will start talking about you. And that news will reach people you never thought they would reach. And that's why Boaz could tell Naomi that he has heard about all the things she had done for her mother-in-law. Because at that time, people were hustling for themselves. People didn't have time for mother-in-law. Remember, her fellow sister-in-law left. And that's what everybody, nobody had time to be taking care of one old person. Because the times were challenging. But in that challenging time, people were talking about this woman that was taking care of herself and her mother-in-law at a time where people were just taking care of themselves. And that's why when you work, don't just do work for sustenance. Do selfless work. Because in the end, challenges will go. But what will stay are the stories. The stories of the heroes during the time of challenges. And now when the challenges go, the people that will be rewarded are the people that did selfless work. When challenges go, everybody's eye will clear and then they will realize this person is a good person. During that COVID time that nobody could work, nobody could, this guy was sharing food. During that time when there was a flood, Everybody's house was flooded. This guy's house was flooded too, but was helping people in other houses clear their stuff. During that heat of it, nobody will commend you. But when the flood passes, people will go back and remember what you did. And that's what brings honor at the end of the day. So those are the things I would advise you to do during challenging times. Number one, admit. Don't fake it. Admit that they are challenging times. Admit to yourself. Admit to God. These are challenging times. These are painful times. These are hard times. Some people don't like to say that they are going through hard times. But it's true. See, they are going through hard times. It's part of life. Challenges are part of life. Look for mentors. Look for teachers. Align yourself with people that are older. Not particularly your peers. Remember, your peers can only see as far as you can see. They cannot see further. Most of your peers only have the experiences that you have. They've not passed it themselves. So how can they guide you through it? So look for people that have been there, that have gone through it. And a lot of times, they are the older people. Stay in their circle. Have them as mentors. Number two, no, number three, work. Always find work. Not work that your mind conceives but work that your hand receives. Find work that your hand finds to do. Your hand can, can lay your hand on it. It might not be the best work, but find it and do it. And do it well. Do it diligently. Be punctual at your work. Pay attention to detail. Very important. Pay attention to detail. Do your work well. No matter whether it's work you love to do, or work you don't love to do. In challenging times, don't be picky. Find work that your hand can do. Next, find, look out for the small favors. Never, never um, underestimate small favors. Compliments. Compliments, encouragement, um, little things, just small favors that people extend to you. Share them, share those stories. Share those stories with your guides, with your mentors, share it with your friends. Take advice. Take advice 
from those people that tell you what to do, take advice. Very important when they advise you, take advice, especially when your mentor advises you, when your teacher advises you, take advice. Always look your best, whether it's by dressing or by demeanor. Look your best. Wear the best expression. Wear, wear the best of your clothes. Take the best care of your clothes. Take the best care of your emotions so that you can express yourself best in your demeanor. But never let your problems show on you. Never let people be able to tell your problems just by looking at you. Very important. And those are the things I would advise you to do in challenging times. And you realize that by doing these things in challenging times, when the challenging times pass, because challenges expire, you realize that you come out of challenges a champion. You come out of challenges celebrated. You come out of challenges confident, not broken. And I hope somebody will listen to this and, and not be discouraged by challenges, but will be encouraged by the presence of challenges, knowing that they can be surmounted and you can come out better at the end of the day. So at this point, I'll be um, handing back to Shola and thanking um, Shola for giving me the opportunity to talk with you tonight. So as many people are listening to this, whether it's a playback, um, yeah, I'll be I'll be more than happy. I'm sure Shola can share my my details, my number on the group. If you want to, if you want to reach out to me via WhatsApp, I have a Telegram group. I should like part of the Telegram group too. If you want to join that and ask questions, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. But thank you for having me here tonight. It has been an honor talking to you. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. A wonderful presentation. I learned a lot. I really learned a lot. Thank you so much, sir. And God bless you. All right. A quick one. Um, we just have a few people on the live section. If you have a question, I don't know, maybe Daddy Tola can spare us two minutes or three minutes of his time to do this. Is there a question you have for him? No, he said he doesn't like you know doing late classes and my apologies for that sir and i've taken that to cognizance is there a question for satola alabi of course yes this teaching is being recorded so immediately after this you know section i'm going to send the recording for download all right sir i believe there's no question I hope we got value for time. Thank you so much, sir, for granting our request. God bless you. We really appreciate you. We love and we celebrate you. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. All right, so we've come to the end of Great Mind Teaching Series, a pre-edition. We'll be doing this sometime very soon. Just stay around our social media handles for information. Thank you very much. Sweet Holy Spirit of the living God, I give you all the glory for the grace to be able to do this. Thank you for the day one. Thank you for the day two. Thank you that there was not network interference. Jesus will return all the glory back to you in the name of Jesus. As many as they are that will be listening to this teaching from your son, O oh Lord, may they hear, may they see truth, may they see insights to everything that your son has communicated to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory to the name of the Lord. Jesus' name we have prayed. All right, thank you very much. We've come to the end of this teaching series what to do in challenges time the recording will be sent immediately to the group for download thank you so much daddy Tolalabi. thank you so much guys for joining those that shares the program i really appreciate god bless you see you at the top